Hi guys, Matt DeQuenna here from BeyondGrappling.com. Uh, today I'm going to do a 20 random f judo facts about me. I was nominated by Tom from the Red Dragon Diaries.com. Uh, he challenged me and tagged me to do 20 judo facts about myself so that hopefully you can learn more about me and who I am, uh, which is going to be a really cool little thing. So hopefully we can get some popular judo people from around the world to start doing this so we can learn more about each other, about our personal lives, about our, just judo facts about each other. Uh, so Tom nominated me, so thanks Tom. Uh, check out Tom's website uh, at reddragondiaries.com and I'm going to tag two people here, two popular people in the judo world. The first one is 2012 uh, London Olympian Evo De Santos. Uh, so Evo's got a, a great YouTube channel, Evo Judo, Evo uh, Judo.com. Uh, he's got a knee Rico at the moment, so I hope you're going well, mate. So I'm going to tag you to give 20 uh, judo facts about yourself. It can either be a video like this one or it can be a blog post as well. And the second person I'm going to nominate is Dr. Rady Ferguson. Uh, everyone, if you don't know Rady, uh, you know, he's, a, he's an Olympian, a Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Judo black belt. He's done a lot uh, online. He does a lot of products, a lot of Judo information, a lot of coaching and things like that. So, Rady, if you can just whack together a, a video or 20 or 10 Judo facts about yourself or a blog post and then tag two more people that you know that, you know, that would be awesome. So, firstly, 20 Judo. Uh, actually, I have 18 Judo facts, not 20. I couldn't think of... Oh, no, I have 20. I have 20. Uh... It's pretty hard to do actually, 20, but um, so the first fact, I started judo at six years old because me, my brother and I used to fight all the time. We used to watch the Power Rangers and then we used to fight all the time and my mum was like, okay, you guys are going to stop fighting all the time. So she got us uh, to go and do some judo down the road at the local police boys club and we got started down there and I absolutely loved it. Uh, now my first coach of that judo club, this is my second point, my first coach was a guy called Louis Val. He's a 7th Dan uh, Kodakan Black Belt and he placed 5th at the 1987 or 89 World Championships, losing to Sensei Okada from Japan in the semi-finals. He was my uh, first judo coach uh, and then after I, he left coaching from there uh, to do some few other things and so then I moved to a different judo club and started training uh, with my coaches from about eight or nine years old to today, they're still my coaches. I've, uh, the Hills, Steve and Tom Hill have been my coaches for 20 years. Uh, the third fact about uh, my judo fact is that uh, my brother and sister also represented uh, Australia for judo. So my older brother, my sister's the oldest and she represented Australia at the Oceania Championships getting a second place and my brother also represented Australia as well. So uh, my older brother and my older sister are both very good at judo but I guess I loved it more than them and I stuck around a little bit longer and uh, but they all represented Australia first and I, I helped, you know, they paved the way for me to help me get to represent Australia as well. Uh, my favourite techniques growing up, because I'm a lightweight, my favourite techniques, this is point number four, judo fact about me, my favourite techniques were drop sinagi. I used to do drop sinagi all the time uh, and then one day I went away for a tournament and I couldn't do drop sinagi and one of my friends was yelling from the side, do katagruma, do katagruma. And I was like, I don't even know how to do that throw. And I ended up losing the match. And so then I came home and I was like, all right, if I could learn katagruma, I could do a sinagi on the right side and then a katagruma on the left side. I can have both angles covered and I'll hopefully, I, maybe next time I'd win that match. So I started really drill, drilling a katagruma, uh, but now it's banned. So now I've got to work other techniques. So these days uh, I work an Osotogari and Ashiwaza. I've had five knee operations uh, all up, so I've had four knee ops on this one and one on that one. So drop Sinagi, obviously I was doing it wrong for a long time where I was banging my knees too hard into the mat, uh, plus, uh, you know, just with injuries in general. So I tend now to not do many rotational throws, not many Sinagis for me or Haragoshis, uh, but mainly Osotogaris and Ashiwaza work quite well for me because my, my knees are really bad. My fifth judo fact about me is I think, for me, personally, the two hardest judo techniques for me to perform are a Tai Toshi and a Nuchimata. I really struggle with these two throws, and I honestly feel like they're technically the hardest judo throws. Like a Tai Toshi in particular, you can't muscle a Tai Toshi. It either works or it doesn't. Like you can't get it like a... You can muscle other techniques, you know, you can use a bit of weight, but I find with a Tai Toshi, it's really hard to muscle. And I find for me, maybe my height and my technique's not that great with a Nuchimata, but I've been trying to develop these two techniques. But for me, they're the two hardest techniques that I, I find.
that I struggle with the most. Uh, number six, uh, my favorite Newaza techniques are gi chokes and pins. I really love Newaza. I love doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I love doing groundwork in Judo as well. Uh, and nine out of my last ten fights internationally are or one all on the ground, either with strangles, arm bars, or pins. So I really do like, uh, I like doing groundwork. On the ground, I either like doing the British strangle or the Buchanan choke, the bow and arrow choke, whatever you want to call it. And I like just pinning people. Uh, doing a sumigeish into a yuko or a wazari and then holding them down in a, in a munigatami is my is my favorite groundwork stuff. Point number seven, my f two favorite judo players. So my point number seven is my first favorite judo player was Koga. Uh, Koga was absolutely phenomenal. He really opened my eyes to developing judo techniques and having multiple entries for the one throw. You know, like Koga had a sinagi, but he had ten different entries from five different grips. So that he really, really blew my mind. But what I also loved about Koga was the fact that everyone knew, like if you look at 92 Olympics, 92 to 96, all he did was Sinagi and a Koji Gari. So he had those, uh, uh, Sinagi and a Koji Makakomi. He had those angles or those directions down pat and everyone knew it. If you watch the 96 Olympics, Koga came out doing Koshiguruma, Urunagi, Yoko Tomonagi. He was doing techniques that no one had expected him to do because everyone thought, oh, here comes Koga with his Sinagis and, or his Sodes. But he actually knew, he actually developed his Judo because he knew people were going to work him out. And that's what I love. And that's, that's what I love about Koga. And that's why I think he was so good. He knew, everyone knew he does Sinagi, so he adapted his Judo, worked on other techniques. And then all of a sudden he came out in 96 with techniques that no one saw coming. So I really love that about Koga. Uh, point number eight. What I, uh, my second favorite judo player is, is Jun from Korea. What I love about Jun was his crazy style of Uchimata. But what I loved most about Jun was the fact that he wanted to throw people for Ripon. He wasn't happy winning by penalties. He wasn't happy winning by Yukos or Wazaris. He only wanted to win by Ippon. And I read an interview or I saw an interview about him one day. And he said that um, the reason why he retired from judo competition was because he couldn't throw people for Ripon. If he can't win by Ippon, there's no point doing judo. That was his mindset. And I really loved that about him was that he, uh, you know, had great judo and Ippon scoring judo. Where today a lot of people play penalties or play or defend and don't throw for the Ippon score. Point number nine, white gi or blue gi. I tend to wear blue gis more often, uh, mainly because when you're coaching, the mats might be a little bit dirty. I hope not, but sometimes they are and your white gi can get a little bit dirty. But if I had a preference between a white gi and a blue gi, I really like white gi. I like the tradition of the white gi. And I really miss... I fought in 2007 Kano Cup, and it was white gi versus white gi, and we still had to wear the red sash, the red belt. So that was a really cool tournament back in 2007. It's probably one of the last tournaments that you actually did uh, for me with the two white gis before they brought in the blue gi. Actually, blue gi was in, but they still wanted to keep their tradition. So the blue gi was actually in at that time, but Japan wanted to keep the tradition of Kano Cup wearing white gi. So I really like that. Uh, what sort of gi? So point number 10, judo facts about me. Uh, I love wearing Mizuno geese. I wear nothing else but Mizuno geese. Uh, if I'm, say I'm at a training camp and I'll try someone else's gi on, if it's not Mizuno, I feel weird. I love Mizuno geese. I feel good in a Mizuno gi. Uh, and, uh, and they make me feel good. They make me look good, I think. And uh, I really love wearing Mizuno. I don't really wear any other brand. Uh, point number 11. This is quite a funny story that you wouldn't know. Uh, the first time I ever got humbled at judo, and it wasn't actually at judo. I remember I was about eight years old, and I was a good judo player. And uh, even at eight years old, I loved it. I used to try to beat everybody. I was very, I'm very competitive. And I was at a school holiday program. So I was at school. It was the holidays. And my mum was working. So she put us in a school holiday program. And uh, this kid was really annoying me. And he was a little bit older than me, but I was like, don't worry, I'd be able to take him on. And I said to this kid, he, I think he's, he kicked my soccer ball away. And I said, hey, I do judo. I'll, if you do that again, I'll beat you up. And this kid says, well, do you know what? I do judo too. I said, oh, yeah, oh, really? And I came up and did an Osotogari on him, but I didn't break his balance. So I came in for an Osotogari, and he it was a little bit bigger than me, a little bit stronger. And what happens if you don't break their balance? They throw you with an Osotogari, Osotogari counter. So I came in for an Osotogari thinking I'm going to throw this kid. Turns out he really did do judo. He was a little bit older than me, a bit bigger, and I didn't break his balance. And he did an Osotogari counter. So I threw him for Osoto, wrong, and he countered me with Osotogari. Threw me flat on my back, my head hit the ground, and I was like all dizzy. That was the first time I really got humbled at judo. Like, 
don't go picking fights because you don't know who you're messing with and uh, make sure you break their balance before you enter for a throw or you will be counted. So uh, even now, I drive past this school, which is where we're at. I drive past and I, I point and I go, that's where that kid beat me up. That's where he humbled me. So I think it's quite a funny story. Uh, point number 12, the biggest judo throw I've ever been thrown with was in Prague. I was fighting a guy in the USK Cup. I was fighting a guy from Poland. He was an extreme left-hander winning by Wazari, and I was chasing him with 30 seconds to go, and I threw a big top grip, and he came in under, and he threw me with an Utsurugoshi, or the changing hip throw. He threw me so high, his head was at my hip. I was like this far above him. He ended up throwing me for Rippon, and I nearly got winded. I nearly got winded. And I came off the mat, and my friend Evo and Priscus were there, mouths were open, they were like, I've never seen someone get thrown so big. I got smashed with the biggest Utsurugoshi ever. Point number 13, the hardest judo player I ever fought was Min Ho Choi uh, from Korea and he won the Beijing Olympic Games. I trained with him all the, through the lead up of the Olympic Games and he was so hard, he's so fast, he absolutely destroyed me, he was an incredible judo player. Uh, so he's the hardest judo player I ever fought. Another hard judo player I fought, I don't know who he is, I don't know where he, he came from Brazil, I was fighting him in Japan, just in training. I stood there and I stood, stepped forward with my right foot. He did a right Kawuchigari. I was like, okay, okay, he's got a right Kawuchigari. Then I stood forward with my left foot. He threw me with a left Kawuchigari. So I was like, okay, great. Don't step forward with your right foot because he'll do a Kawuchi. Don't step forward with your left foot. He'll do a Kawuchi. So I stood still and he threw me with Uchimata. <laughs> this guy was a great judo player. He had every angle covered. I don't know who he is, but he was a phenomenal judo player as well. Uh... Where I'd like to train, I've trained all over the world, you know, Japan 14 times, Korea, Europe, South America, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I'd really like to train in Mongolia. They've got a very unique style, and uh, I'd love to train there and see how I'd go. I'd also like to train in one of the Russian uh, Olympic training centers and see how I'd go there. Uh, the best place to train in the world, this is point 15, the best place I think to train in the world is Scuba University. Uh, Sensei Okada is the head coach there. Scuba, the athletes are all really nice and they're phenomenal. That's where like Hiroka comes from, Ebenuma, Rashita, Akimoto, Kanamaru, Ono, uh, and the, the bigger Ono and the little Ono, uh, Ogura, all those guys train there. And they're really, really nice and they train hard. So, And it's a nice place. There's nice restaurants and cafes all over the place. Uh, number 16, the most... I've fought some really really good judoka in my time at training camps and that sort of stuff and I'm really privileged to have fought Sensei Okada who's a two time world champion I trained with him at Scuba University it was an honour just to train with him uh, he threw me around uh, I also got to train with Kanto one day at a training camp he's a 73 kilo player but he didn't have a partner so I ran up and said I'd love to fight you can I please fight you and so he fought me and that was a real real privilege to fight him also Akimoto at Scuba University I, I trained with him that was awesome uh, Kanamaru, uh, Minho Choi, Rocky Draxic, uh, all these guys are really privileged to train with and I really learn a lot and I'm really happy that I got to train with them. And another one was Kovacs, you know, under 100 kilo Kovacs, he's the first guy to beat Inoue when Inoue had his winning streak. I trained with him one day, I just ran up and said, could I please fight you? So I did a three minute round with him and it was really fun. Uh, the most inspirational judo players for me, besides Koga, but people that a daily inspiration. So my judo coach is Tom and Steve Hill. I love Tom's, my coach Tom's tenacity of fighting and winning and fighting hard and that really inspires me to train hard and fight hard and my other coach Steve Hill, he's a real brain, he's really smart and I love his chess match approach to judo so that really inspires me. Uh, also Ivan Santos is a really good mate of mine. He inspires me. Uh, he went through a rough patch a few years ago where he wasn't winning many fights uh, he went away, reinvented himself, came back and won six nationals and six Oceania championships in a row. So that's really inspirational. Plus, I've seen how hard he trains when he's overseas in Korea, Japan, and, and that sort of stuff. And that really inspires me to keep training hard and that sort of stuff. And another judo player that inspires me is a guy called Elio Verdi, which is a 60-kilo guy from Italy. Elio Verdi's not... He's never first or second. He's always like third and fifth and seventh for years. He's been third, fifth, seventh, fifth, third, second, first... He always places, but he's always in battles, and he always loses to the top Zantarais or the Sobarovs or the or the uh, Takatos, but he's always in grinding fights, but that inspires me. So even though he's not coming first, he still trains and, and competes really hard. Uh, 
Number 18, the most important techniques I think for modern competition judo today, Tachiwaza. You need to have an Uchimata. You need to have a Sode or, or a Sinagi of some sort. You need to have a get out of jail free card. So I'm, I'm saying a, a really a Yoko Tominagi, a Tominagi or a Sumigeish. And you need to have good Ashiwaza. Oh, and lastly, and you need to have some sort of Uranagi suplex pickup of some sort. For Newaza, you need to have good spatial awareness. You need to have a tenacity. This is point 19. In modern competition judo, you need to have a tenacity to go to the ground. So throw for Yuko, transition into Newaza. That's a must. And all the guys that winning Newaza, they're not any. They're not special at Newaza. They're not really that good, but they actually do Newaza. You got to do Newaza in competition to win. A lot of guys get to the ground and stop. Uh, and point number twenty, uh, judo facts about me. I love helping. I love judo, and I love helping people get better at judo. Uh, growing up, you know, in Australia, we don't have necessarily the best judo, but I read every single book I possibly could, and I remember telling my mum. One day, Mum, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna write because I like writing, as you can tell with my websites and my books. I love writing. I said to Mum, I'm gonna make the best book, a one-stop shop for all judo players all over the world, and they can buy one book that has stand-up, groundwork, strength and conditioning, nutrition, mindset, everything in it, so that I can help people learn the things that I had to struggle with. Even you know, today I learn a move. And then the guy says to me, oh, I learned this when I was 10 years old. And I'm like, are you serious? I'm nearly 30. I only learn it now. So I like teaching people the stuff that I had to go through the years to learn. If I can teach you stuff early on in your career, you're going to be a way better judo player than I'll ever be. And that's why I love creating all my content, creating my website, my blog, and all my eBooks Because I love teaching people the stuff that I've learned that's helped me. And hopefully it can help you at a younger age so we can develop good quality judo at a young age and then we're going to create one day from Australia an Olympic champion which is what I'm absolutely passionate about and I love just helping people love judo I love helping competitors win tournaments and I love seeing people that love judo to love judo even more that's what I love the most so guys that's uh, 20 judo facts about me uh, thanks so much Tom for nominating me to do this like I said at the start of the video Evo De Santos Roddy Ferguson let's do 20 facts, judo facts about you that no one of us, none of us know. Make sure you guys tag one or two more people. Can't wait to see what you're going to say. Have a great day. I'm going to go uh, do some work now. I'm going to enjoy the weather. I might sit outside and do some work. Uh, the weather in Australia at the moment is absolutely fantastic. So have a great day. Make sure you hit me up on Facebook or email if you have any questions about judo. Uh, love is all heaps and have fun. Stay safe. Train hard. Don't get injured. See you later on.